What inspired me to join the armed forces uh, goes back to my childhood, really. Um, so I'm from Afghanistan, so is my family. We escaped Afghanistan at the height of the Soviet invasion. And I came here at the age of like three or four, I believe. And, uh, you know, grew up here as a normal kid. And as I got older, I started to understand why we came here and the history there and the conflict. And I had this, you know, I had this sense of gratitude from that. And as I got older into my teens, that, 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 that gratitude kind of grew in me where I felt like I needed to do something, you know. And so that was a big uh, inspiration for me to join the military and just, I didn't know how long I was going to stay in or anything like that, but I knew I had to pay back somehow for how we came here from Afghanistan and our quality of life was significantly better. You know, we had freedoms that we never had over there, opportunities. Um, so I joined the military not knowing what I was going to do, but I, I joined the Marine Corps and went into the infantry and I did that for four or five years before I decided that I wanted to do something bigger and better. And then I left the Marine Corps and I left the Marine Corps and I went into the Army and tried out for Special Forces and became a Green Beret. And I've been a Green Beret for about 16 years now. Um, and then when I got out, I started a training company and a consulting company and, and just been doing that. And a lot of consulting for projects like this. The Covenant is about a team of Green Berets in Afghanistan. Um, pretty typical mission set, really. They're there to try to target the Taliban and certain key leadership and try to affect some of the activity and some of their influence uh, in the region that they're at. And so when you have a team like that, the mission set's pretty big. They can do anything from, you know, actually target packets and, and killing people to building rapport with the locals and getting them to kind of help us out, give us information. And so being a Green, Green Beret myself, you know, that everything made sense. It was just natural to this project, to the Covenant. And so when I came in, I was able to help the actors, you know, portray what that looks like and what that sounds like, you know, what that, um, what that should feel like to them as they're interacting with each other on camera. And uh, especially with Jake and Dar, you know, trying to get them to build that team cohesion and how they, that dynamic of how they should be as a, as an SFODA, right, as a team. As a military consultant, you kind of get involved in all aspects of that movie. You're talking to every department to, to bring that authenticity. And that's, all, that's our whole job is to really just bring as much authenticity to the project as we can uh, without kind of stepping onto that creative vision you know, of the, of the project leadership, in this case, Guy Ritchie and Max Keen and those guys. So there's a balance there. I tell them what right looks like or sounds like or whatever, and then they tell me, great, we'll take this, and they cherry pick what they want, and then, you know, that's it, we move on. Conversations with Guy Ritchie are always interesting. Uh, he's such a brilliant person when it comes to what he, his vision is and how he wants to portray that on camera. Um, and really, my, com my conversations with Guy Ritchie were daily, uh, every morning for a couple hours, in fact. You know, and it was, Kawa, I want to get this, get this look, and how do we make it better? Like, where do we inject the authenticity here? And so that is really what I was saying, like, well, sir, we should do it this way, and this is how it should sound, and maybe change up these lines to kind of make it give it a little more authenticity. Um, and his vision was, I think, great from the get-go. It was just my expertise in the small things, like some of the gunplay and some of the fighting and some of the posture, uh, a little bit of dialogue, of course. And, and w between that, I think just giving him just a little bit of that information was, was helping him kind of, um, you know, set up that shot or understand what it should look like. And everything else was really just him. Jake plays um, Sergeant Kinley, and it's actually Sergeant First Class Kinley, but he's also the team sergeant. So he's not just an E7 on the team. He's now taking the role of the team sergeant, which is basically the, the, the head, enlisted, head enlisted person that's in charge of the team. Of course, we have an officer, but we never see him in this movie. And as the team sergeant, he is what we call the team daddy, which is we know that he's in charge. But there's a mutual respect between him and the guys where it's not like we're not calling him sergeant, we're not calling him sir. 
we are calling him by his name because I also might be an E7. I'm just not a team sergeant like he is. Um, and with that, you know, with that, that's where that cohesion and that camaraderie come into play where it's like he doesn't need to yell at me to tell me what to do for me to, for me to understand that he means business. You know, he just says, Kyle, we'll get this done and I'm, and I'm on it. You know, whereas I can come to him as well and be like, John, I don't think this is a great decision. Like, we should rethink this. And he would respect that. And we could take another look at going about it. The way he portrayed that in the movie was great. I mean, I think Jay Gyllenhaal is just a very calm and collected kind of actor anyway. He's very focused. And for him to step into that team sergeant role was almost natural for him. You know, and, and that's something we talked about, Jake and I. And we talked it with Dar and the rest of the guys, Reese and all those guys. We said, look, this is the team dynamic on an SF team. You guys are very brotherly, but also when it's time to work, it's like, that's it, let's get done. You know, let's get that stuff done. Yeah. Interpreters in Afghanistan are really hodgepodge because especially, you know, t Afghanistan was a 20 year war. And in the beginning, there might've been a little bit of structure there for the vetting system and some maybe a, like official training for these guys. But as you get into this war five, 10 years later, you know, you're, you're falling in on interpreters from the last team. And the last team's telling you like, hey, this guy's solid. He's really squared away at this, but he sucks at this, you know, or, or he needs to be watched or maybe, you know, we're trying to get rid of him. So, and then as far as our capabilities go, obviously language, you know, translation and all that, but also some of them have a little bit of, because they've worked with SF teams before, they have those SF tactics down. They know the protocol. You know, they know how to go about interacting with the actual Green Berets, you know, when not to kind of cross those lines as Dar did a couple times, right? Um, and so it's, it's really, you never know what you're gonna get with your interpreter unless you get a good packet on him from the team prior saying, this guy squared away, keep him. In fact, a lot of the times our interpreters were so squared away, especially on the SF teams that we were trying to actively get them visas to get out of the country or at least let them write them a, a letter of recommendation to try to help them out when they apply for their visa. Uh, but interpreters can be just translators or they could be war fighters right next to us, you know, shooting, so. When you are, in this case, an Afghan local and you sacrifice your safety, sacrifice the safety of your family, your name uh, and identity and all of that to join, in this case, the Americans and help fight the Taliban who also live there with you, uh, there, that has to be commended somehow. And that's the, it's not like writing him on a award like you were like a soldier, like and John got his Distinguished Service Cross. Like there's no award to give Dar, you know? So the only way we can really repay these guys, especially when they are uh, when they hold that integrity and they are with us right there and they like none of they don't they don't lie to us or or kind of double cross us when we vet them and we know that these guys are good guys and they're they're right there with us they're risking their lives we have to find a way to reward them for that the best way we can reward them for that is to get them and their family out of this war torn country and somewhere safe even if it's not the US you know uh, not all interpreters came to the U.S. Some of them went to Europe and other places where they had family, and we helped them get there. And I think that's the best thing we could have done for them. So this movie is very relevant with current events, right? The exit strategy from Afghanistan was very sloppy. Um, the way we left a lot of interpreters back there uh, the way we left a lot of U.S. contractors back there, but also the interpreter families, and we just kind of left them behind. And this movie touches on that. But it doesn't just touch on that fact. It touches on why it was so important to not leave them there. The relationship between Dar and, and Jake, you see how that develops, and you see how you know the, the great lengths to which Dar went to get Jake out of there and save his life and then the great lengths to which Jake went and how it was hurting both of them not just physically but mentally and so that camaraderie that relationship between uh, the US military personnel and their you know respective interpreters uh, is one that needs to be talked about because the way they just got left behind was not right you know like those guys again risked their lives and their families' lives, an entire, maybe their entire family line to come help us, and we kind of just left them. And this movie touches on that, and I think people will see why that's so important as where on the media you see like, oh, wow, we just left all these Afghan dudes behind that worked with us. No, now you watch this movie and you, you get emotional 
because you see the bond between the two and that is why it's so important. And then by the time you're done with the movie, you're just like, you go back to the event and you're just like, man, I can't believe we did that, you know? So I think it really touches, touches your feelings right there.